my body, I can do what I want with it. I believe it's a woman's right to choose. What? God doesn't want us to have fun? A person's face is a very personal thing. As long as two people love each other, what difference does it make what sex they are? We're a lot more open in our church. A church which is called to influence the world finds herself influenced by the world. If we as Christ's representatives can scarcely stay afloat, how can we expect to rescue a society that is sinking around us? We've bought into the world's values, its entertainment, its morals, its attitudes. We've also bought into its tolerance, its insistence that uh, we should never challenge the private beliefs of individuals, whether outside the church or within it. In the face of cultural pressures, we have found ourselves confused, hesitant to act, unable to give a loving but convincing witness to the world. Of course, there are also many hopeful signs in our culture. There are churches and individuals that are making a great impact for the gospel, and for that, we are very thankful. But for the most part, we as Christians have settled down to a comfortable kind of Christianity, a Christianity that demands very little and therefore in turn makes very little difference in the world and the wider culture. When the world takes a step in our direction, we embrace it without a twinge of conscience. But a church that has made its peace with the world is incapable of changing it. Opinion polls show that the difference between the church and the world is in some ways indistinguishable. The sins that are in the world are in the church. Divorce, immorality, pornography, risque entertainment, materialism, and apathy to what other people believe. Now officially, we believe that without trusting Jesus as Savior, people are lost. But unofficially, we act as if what people believe and the way in which they behave really does not matter. No wonder our light has become a flicker and our salt has lost its savor. Many believe that we have no right to judge anyone's lifestyles or beliefs. Our commitment to radical individualism and the privatization of faith has made us willing to live and let live without discussion, without evaluation or rebuke. I think that we've lost the ability to judge the world because we have lost the ability to judge ourselves. We affirm certain beliefs and then act as if they don't really matter. No wonder the most oft-quoted verse of the Bible is not, for God so loved the world, but rather, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Even in evangelical circles, we sometimes hear, Who are you to judge? The clear implication is that the uh, question means that we have no right to say this lifestyle is wrong or this is heresy or again this preacher is a false teacher. The one word that best describes our culture is, well, whatever. How did we get here? Why do we find it so difficult to say that some religious views are wrong or that some kinds of behavior are sinful? Why do we allow so much of Hollywood into our homes, pretending that we and our families are not influenced by the entertainment industry? Why do we allow false teachers and prophets to flourish without warning the people of God? Why are various forms of occultism practiced? These are just some of the questions that we're going to be discussing in this series. Today, beliefs are evaluated not on the basis of whether they are true or false, but rather by what I think. So in matters of religion and morality, truth is whatever I say it is. Well, since the ego has replaced God, people feel free to do whatever is necessary to find pleasure, no matter who gets hurt, no matter the consequences. Since there can be no moral judgments that are applicable to all people, we are told, then morality, we say, is nothing more than what seems good to me. Well, no wonder we often hear the mantra, who are you to judge? Many Christians feel embarrassed about the fact that we believe in universal truth. 
specifically in the uniqueness of Christ and his death and resurrection as the only means by which we can be accepted by God. In an age when the greatest sin is offensiveness and the greatest virtue is inoffensiveness, it is difficult to share a message which at its core is offensive to the mind of fallen man. Given such an atmosphere, we can better understand why we have often uncritically accepted the world's values, its misguided tolerance, its entertainment, and its commitment to selfish individualism. We have preferred to be quiet, standing by, and watching our culture drift, feeling helpless amid the swelling tide. In our timidity, we have lost the credibility that is needed to be a compelling witness to the world. Thank you.